Hello everybody and welcome back to my vlog, to my channel. Now, I'm doing this again uh, to show you and I'm doing it again. So first of all I'll tell you why I'm doing it again this time. This time we're using this, this uh, Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 and it's an audio interface and it's got a lower noise floor than the Oxnar with the line in input. I made a boo boo before when I used the Oxnar because there's an ALT setting in there which I was reading through the RMAA uh, when I did the audio analysis in there to see what it was like and that was the best setting to get a loop back. But you're supposed to take it out of that setting uh, and use a line in. And I did try that but it seemed so messy but I've installed some drivers called Uni Oxnar that cleaned up the line in, but the noise floor is not as low as it is with this Scarlet. So if we just take it, well, let me just first of all say, I'm sorry for anybody's time that was wasted when you got to see the results of the amplifiers when it was in the wrong setting, because like it was pointed out, they were too incredible, too incredible to be true. And that's because there was a mistake. So I'm so sorry for that. Um, I've checked and double checked and triple checked and I can't make a mistake the same with this setup and so we're going to get to see it through here. Now the reason why I'm saying I'm doing this again is because I use a microphone, a wireless microphone and I noticed that there was some noise being introduced into the system and I, I disconnect the microphone, turn it off and I'd start playing around with the wires and I think I sort the, the noise out. I'm thinking, oh, it's something to do with the way my wires are. They're all screen shielded cables i don't know why that would happen but anyway this seemed to be the thing and i go back into setting up and i put the microphone on start doing the recording and ah the noise is there again what's going on i'm thinking and so i show you the noise because see this noise floor here well when i the power is on on the amplifier now if i turn that off we'll see that change you see the noise floor drop that's of the setup so that's my cables, that's the Scarlet, that's everything there. And then I'll put the power supply on and we're going to introduce noise because the amplifier is going to come on, the power supply is going to come on. So we're going to introduce a bit of noise and that's what we got. All right. But if I show you it now with this bit of video I'm going to put over the top is uh, look at the noise floor here. It's not the way it's supposed to be. Do you see that one before the 1K and before the 2K, that extra bit, and it all goes all the way through? Right, let's get rid of that. And we can see now as I start turning up the volume here, we don't have that. We have what it's supposed to look like. There's nothing before the 2K, there's nothing before the 1K. This is because my microphone isn't on, it's not transmitting. Oh, wow, has this all become very sensitive? Okay, you know, I'll figure that out, but for now, we're recording on the phone, and uh, we're just going to go along with that. So, let's uh, let's start this. Now, you can't expect these old amplifier circuits to run at full power and give the greatest results. To think that they're not going to distort or anything like that is ridiculous. They're going to distort. They weren't made to run at full power. They were made to run at a comfortable volume and give it enough dynamic range at a comfortable volume. And in some ways, you know, these are the amps that came after tubes. Um, I got a funny feeling that uh, some of them were the way they were like this. As I turn the volume up here, like when we go from like 30 dB-ish up, you start getting this your first fundamental input signal and then you got the second and the third and the fourth fifth sixth and it all degrades down that's the sort of warmth harmonics you get off a tube you can imagine going straight from tubes to transistors and the sound would have been quite a bit different like a lot of people didn't like cds um, straight away because that clean cut sound and they prefer to have a bit of noise from the the record that they listen to a bit of crackle a bit of whatever because hey fundamentally people don't like change this is what we got so now we got a nice no low noise floor 
as we can see, and our noise that we're incurring into this is the harmonics, which is very nice. Let me go back down to that sort of around about 30 mark. It'd be a, a decent listening volume. You know, you're just listening to music, you're not blaring it out, trying to get the neighbors annoyed. I'm gonna put this here, look at the volume as it goes up. So we got our 30.6 dBFS, and our total harmonic distortion is 0 0.01. And that's pretty respectable. It's pretty respectable. Um, with the noise, it's 0 0.028. Again, still respectable. Now, if we go up, the Stack Exchange audio suggests that um, up to minus 20 is a good, you know, that's like you, 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 you're running it high. It's like, a, I mean, you, if your car can do 120, you're not going to be doing 120 everywhere. You'll be cruising that sort of 80, 90. That's still above the speed limit. I'm not suggesting anyone go and do that. I'm just saying that that's you wouldn't be blasting it everywhere. Just the same as with your yeah your, your audio amplifier. So let's start turning this up, and we go to the minus twenty. To be fair, I'm not trying to overdo the system. We get as close as we can. Yeah, I think that's probably about yeah nineteen eight. And now we can see we just drop that out to get that third harmonic down and so we say all I'm trying to do is get that third harmonic to the same sort of level as that there. there we go so minus 21.3 the reason why I go for the third harmonic because second harmonic even harmonics sound nice the unevens uh, are not so good all right and so if that's just slightly on the same level or slightly down that'd be beautiful and get that nice warm feeling, that nice warm sound. So it's not a terribly bad, it's not got anything really in between or anything that looks like it's gonna be bad. Um, but it, and it's more realistic, 0 0.03. Okay, that's much more realistic than, I can't remember what it was on the other one, but it's a lot more realistic. Now, let me go to a snip that I did once I went in with this. Let me just, just turn that off, take the pressure off the system a bit. And this is the frequency response. And what I've done is I've just gone into this, um, sort of zoomed in a little bit just to show you this. So as we can see here at 30K, don't worry about these numbers here, because you can see between here, let's say we've got 16, 18, there's two, two D, uh, minus two DB there. So we're sort of like one D, you can't really say, because we're right on the middle of the line. So between that sort of 17 and 17 and a half, you know, there's a little bit of drop off there, which would be normal. Um, and if we go across, let's do it in here instead. And let's just do it here. Right, so here we are, and we can see it across this top line. Look. So yes, we are dropping off. We get to the 30 hertz. I suppose we start dropping off really around about 100. It very slowly tapes itself down. 18.27. We get here. 18.28. We get here. 18.32. You know, it's dropping off, dropping off fairly little tiny bit. 18.36. We get to around about 30, 18, 40, and 21, 18, 78. So there's a, there is a drop off there, but this bit here, look, this seems quite interesting. I think this is the harmonics. This, this is the harmonics. This is that um, sort of noise that's in, introduced into that. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's because we've got a lower noise floor now and we can see this what it's doing um let me just put that up back to where it is because look we're on a minus 160 here minus 140 here before with the other setup using the um digilant the analog discovery 2 i could only see down uh there's 110 let's say in the middle here and my noise floor was at 105 minus 105 so these little bits would have been peaking up from that noise floor realistically we could you know all this other space here we couldn't see any of this 
uh, until you know we'd, we'd be pushing up higher of course then we'd see this coming through as distortion so it may look like it's pretty bad but it's not it's just that the noise floor is uh, pretty low here on our measuring so there we go that's that's what I'm showing you there we got the total harmonic distortion if we did if I show you trying to go up to the, the full um, minus 3 dB as you can see we've got a THD now of 0.6 somewhere at 15 and if I try to push that up all the way it's just getting ridiculous 30 uh, 30 so I'm just gonna reduce that down to a more acceptable level all right there we go you know it's a it's an old design and this is a copy of the old design so I can imagine that the quad 405 with all of the other components that would have come with the quad 405 would have been a much better amplifier this is just the board you know it's the even the power leads they're too long you wouldn't really have them going that long uh, having long leads like this can introduce its own noise um and in the original setup of course none of those would would be there but if you were going to be building one of these kits chances are by the time you use shorter cables and everything else you're going to get a better uh, and better output i'm gonna you know all i can do is show you from here but this time around there's no mistakes so thank you very much for watching and thank you for um you know being patient with me when i made a mistake and and i will uh, catch you guys in the next one Bye for now.